Without further ado, let me get to the panel. Um, I'd like to, uh, to introduce, uh, everybody would like to introduce themselves. So what, what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to ask people to introduce themselves very briefly and answer the first question, which is um, whether you could say a few words how you define food transparency in the context of your own business. Louis, last but not least. Hello, I'm Louis from Grain Chain. I'm the CEO of the company. Um, we focus on creating ecosystems for the entire supply chain, so starting from the seed all the way to the final processors. Um, we, we operate in the United States, Mexico, Central America, and South America. I mean, transparency to me means real data. It means being able to create systems in that first mile that are accessible, that are usable, and that are truthful. Um, we have a very, very uh, inability to read um, data from that first mile. Uh, a lot of our users are very small stage farmers, are farmers who don't have the technology or the infrastructure. And my idea of transparency is being able to get their word to the consumer, is being able to collect that data in a real form and being able to give them the technology and the infrastructure to not only defend themselves, but also prove that there's a lot of really good farmers out there doing great things. And that's what transparency is for us. How is technology of your company enabling transparency? How would it be for Grain Chain, Lewis? How, how, how are you enabling that transparency uh, in, in the supply chain? Because you're there at the first mile as well. Absolutely. I mean, I think uh, transparency is a very romantic word. You know, um, we all like to hear it. We all like to see it, but how do you really implement it? And how do you get that first mile to really uh, embrace what you need? And I think that's the most difficult challenge. And I think the, what, what Grain Train brings to the table is creating a proper incentive structure, is uh, not only creating um, education in, in teaching that first mile that transparency is going to lead to better premiums, transparency is going to lead to um, dollars in the pocket. And, and, and that's where um, it, it gets pretty complicated because when you ask a consumer to pay for that transparency or you ask for a company that buys that product to pay for that transparency, you get a lot of doors slammed in your face. And it, while there's a lot of regulation that's helping transparency become real and there's a lot of different industry that knows that in order for transparency to be um, uh, implemented, uh, there, it, there needs to be a sustainable incentive structure. And I think what, what Grain Chain does in most of the regions that we're in is it creates the ability to use the software. It creates the ability to use platforms um, with a very strong incentive structure with understanding and an education of where those incentives come from and what happens. So when, when an individual starts learning that if they use a platform, if they input the right information, if they do the right things, their product's going to get a little bit of a premium or it's going to get purchased first or it's going to get a guaranteed payment, um, they're going to start doing it more. But it's all an education and it's not just education in the first mile. It's education in the consumer level. It's buying products that have true transparency, because there's not there's a lot of not there's a lot of fake transparency out there. But buying products with true transparency and paying a little bit of a premium really trickles down tremendously down to the individual farmer. So I, I think that it's romantic and it's possible, but there needs to be a strong level of incentive within the platform, and I think that's what Grain Chain focuses on. And, and are you also providing transparency around those incentives specifically as well? Absolutely. Um, so the, how do you do that? So, so the big thing that the Grain Chain does is, is we create uh, uh, smart contracts, and within, within our platform, everyone that gets paid gets paid exactly what's expected. Um, they're, they're, all of the data points are created by IoT integrations or by specific checks and balances. So when we push those incentives down, they go directly to the farmers. They don't go to the cooperatives. When we create liquidity programs, we know that it's going directly to the farmers. And, and, and that's where they see the incentives, where we don't push the money down to the middlemen. And when you work in the, in, in the first mile like we do, um, that's the most important selling point, is that you're going to get the money that you deserve for the good work that you do. But you've got to give them the infrastructure and the education to take advantage of it. That's an important learning. 
So if you think about challenges uh, uh, that you're facing as a company in creating that transparency in your, in your solution or in your business. There's a lot of uh, profit in, in non-transparency. So in order to break that barrier, uh, it needs to start at the bottom. And, and there is a significant interest um, in thought I don't think it's a reality, but there's a thought that if you're not transparent, you're going to profit or take advantage. So I, I think that being having the the infrastructure, like you said, to read the data and, and, and read between the lines, because there's a lot of good action in having the incentives to bring it back, is is going to be the way to do it. So, so, so where do you see the big pressure coming from? You're saying you have to be transparent. Where, 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 where do you see that, that, that main pressure coming, coming from? Is that consumer? Is that legislation? What is it? Well, I, I think that consumers are starting to demand it, and they're starting to pay for it. And whether they get it or not, in reality, is, is different, but they're starting to demand it. But we're, we're starting to get legislation that's pushing that way. The European Union is pushing hard that way. And in one way, it's making exports more difficult. But in another way, it's streamlining and saying you have to do this and you have to get on this boat. And I think we need to push our regulators to get on that same boat because we can have the consumers demand it and we can create an, uh, an environment for it, but there's always going to be a very big business in non-transparency. So we need to be very heavily involved in that. And, and do, we, do we as a group here see, see certain trends, broader trends, that would be catalysts to, to further transparency? And, and if yes, what, what would they be? Lewis? I, I think you're seeing it in coffee. I mean, um, the coffee industry is strained, especially in Europe. Um, you're seeing people willing to pay more for specialized coffee, uh, three times more sometimes for a coffee that may taste similar to others, but is guaranteeing fair trade, is guaranteeing that there isn't child labor, it's guaranteeing that um, we're certifying at certain levels. And a lot of the people who are paying for this coffee are not in areas that require it. So you're seeing a trend of people, of consumers, who are willing to pay a dollar extra for a cup of coffee, maybe two, and it's, it's, it's giving them the, the certification that the right practice was done, that, that, that things were tracked from place to place. And, and I think that's where most of our food needs to go, not just for overall peace of mind, but sustainability, is that if we're going to create real sustainability in all of these markets, we need to have that full transparency. We need to know where to go, and we need to know where it came from. And you're seeing those trends in certain niche markets. So where does the group see opportunities for collaboration to generate transparency uh, enabled by technology? Any views on that one? Louis? I mean, I think that um, interoperability and collaboration are the only way we're going to make it. I think there's a lot of people doing a lot of great things. I think we all want to focus on technology, and we all want to implement this technology uh, to everywhere. But it's not real. And it's not real that um, I'm going to be able to push my data payload all the way to the consumer in every scenario. So I think that you're very right. We need to learn not only to, co to, to collaborate together and work on levels of standards, but um, you know, GrainChain has an absolute open API policy. Anyone who wants the data, we can construct it for you. Anyone who, who needs the data, we can push it in the way that we need it. And I think that we need to be able to work together um, efficiently and have that kind of attitude. We have a group at the company who focuses on just pushing data the way people need it. And that's how I think we all need to, to, to be able to work.